Hi, my name is Carrie Reese and I am a violist with the Delaware County Symphony. Today, I'm going to tell you about my favorite instrument, the viola. First of all, you probably noticed that the viola looks a lot like a violin. And that's because it is a lot like a violin. It's just a little bit larger. So violins are typically 14 inches long. So they come up from, they start at the bottom and they come up to about here. Violas can actually be any size and they get bigger as you get bigger. And so my viola is 15 and a half inches long. That's because I'm not very big myself. Most violas are about 16 inches long or slightly larger. Now another thing that's similar about violins and violas is that we play the exact same way. And we have three of the same strings. So I also have an A string, a D string, and I have a G string. What I don't have is I don't have the high string called the E string that violins have, but I have a string that I think is even cooler and it's called the C string which is a low string, and that's my favorite string to play on the viola. Um, another thing that we can notice about the viola is it has a different sound than the violin and the cello. The violin is very high pitched in sound, and the cello is low pitched, and the viola is right in the middle. So I like to compare the viola to the middle layer of a cake. So you might like cake just like I do. And my favorite types of cake have some sort of layer in the middle with either some icing or some fruit or maybe even some ice cream or some crunchies. And that's what the viola is like in the orchestra. We're kind of like the middle layer of the cake that just adds something special to the orchestra. Now we can do some very cool tricks with our fingers and with our bows. So the normal way that I would play, like I'll do a scale. I would play that with my bow, but I can do the scale with other techniques. So one of those techniques is called pizzicato, where I use my fingers. Pizzicato is a lot of fun to do with the whole orchestra. Another technique that we can do is we can actually flip our bows over and do that all together as an orchestra to get a different kind of, almost like a spooky sound. We can also play really close to the bridge. To me, this sounds like a little bit spooky, like on Halloween. We can also do something called a harmonic, which is where we don't press our fingers down as hard as we normally do, and that also gives a different sound. So those are my four strings using harmonics. So here's the regular string, and here's the harmonic. So those are some of my favorite things to do with my bow and my viola. Now I'm going to play two different kinds of music for you on the viola. One way that the viola can sound is the viola can sound very emotional. And it, some people say it sounds like it's in love when it plays. So I'm going to play a song that's very emotional. Arioso by Bach and that makes you feel very happy and maybe makes you feel like you love somebody maybe like your parent or your sibling or your friend. Now the other um, mood that the viola can bring to the orchestra is kind of exciting and energetic and so I'm going to play you one of my favorite melodies that the viola gets to play and it's in the Sibelius Violin Concerto.
but for a moment the violas get to make you feel excited. can help the listeners to feel. Thank you so much for watching and please check out our social media pages for the Delaware County Symphony. We have a Facebook page, we have an Instagram page, and we have a Twitter. Thank you for watching. Hi, my name is Courtney. I'm very excited you decided to join us today to learn a little more about musical instruments, especially with everything going on in our world. Music is really something that can bring us some peace, so I'm glad you're here. I'm here to introduce you to this instrument, it's called the French horn. It's also, you'll hear it called just the horn. And I've been playing horn for about 17 years. Uh, I've been playing with the Delaware County Symphony for about six. And the way that you make music using this instrument is you blow air into this part. It's called the mouthpiece. It's where your mouth goes. And that air travels all the way through this kind of maze of metal tubing. This particular horn is nickel plated, uh, but they make them out of all different sorts of metals. And once it travels through there, it comes out this side, which is called the bell. The thing is, if I just put regular air through, it sounds like this. Not much happens. So in order to make a sound, uh, I need to buzz and vibrate my lips together. Sort of like uh, when you shout in a hallway and it sounds louder and it echoes or you talk through a cardboard tube and it sounds different on the other side you need to make some sort of sound for it to get louder and sound different after going through all this tubing so i would love if you would join me for a demonstration of what that sound is like parents kids you're all invited uh take a deep breath in Put your lips together real tight, and then you force air through them and make a buzz. So you might end up with like a, like a horse noise, or like an elephant if you're changing the pitch. But when you take these kind of goofy noises and you put them through an instrument, it comes out sounding like this. And to show you what that sounds like in music, I'll play a bit of a Mozart concerto for you. soundtracks and in TV soundtracks too. And composers use French horn a lot when they're trying to make you feel a certain way. So for example, if you have seen Star Wars, especially the original trilogy, uh, when they introduce Darth Vader, he gets a theme song that's played by French horns and it's meant to kind of make you scared of them a little bit. And it sounds like this. So that every time he comes on screen and you hear this music play, you get a little scared of him. And they use the same instrument when they introduce Princess Leia, but a totally different theme. So when she comes on screen the first time 
and you really want to help her and you want to be on her side, this is what plays. <laughs> I bet you'll be able to pick out a horn somewhere in the soundtrack and how they're trying to make you feel with it. And when we do these sorts of events um, in public libraries and public spaces, uh, normally we let people come up. I invite people to uh, like push the, the keys on a horn. So I'm gonna show you when you push a key, it moves a little bit of it to actually open up this particular part to play. So that's part of what is changing the pitch. We also open things to uh, questions from the audience. And the most popular question that I get after introducing the French horn to people is why this hand goes in the bell. So it's really for two reasons. One is to help hold it up. It's just kind of a heavy instrument on its own. And the other is so that sound can flow through when it comes out of the bell, it's actually also bouncing off my arm. So I'm kind of extending the instrument. My arm is kind of part of what's helping it to sound good. And that is all I have to show you about the French horn. Again, thank you so much for joining us and I hope you are staying happy and healthy and safe. I'm Katherine Hajak and I play percussion for Delaware County Symphony. In this video, I will be demonstrating the different mallet or keyboard percussion instruments that are used in the orchestra. Percussion instruments are musical instruments played by striking with the hand or with a stick or beater. Mallet or keyboard percussion are instruments that are arranged in a similar pattern to a piano keyboard and so are able to play melodies. This includes orchestra bells, xylophone, vibraphone, and marimba. I'm starting with bells. This is the smallest and the highest pitched of the mallet instruments. It goes from a written F below middle C to two octaves above middle C. And it sounds an octave above what is written. The bars are made of metal, and as you can hear, it rings like a bell. This is the most commonly used keyboard instrument in the orchestra. It is often used when other high-pitched instruments, like flute and piccolo, are also playing. Here is an excerpt from Paul Ducas' Sorcerer's Apprentice. This is the xylophone. It is a little bigger than the bells, and while it shares the same upper notes as the bells, it can also play lower sounding notes. The xylophone's range is three and a half octaves. It goes from an actual F below middle C to a C three octaves above. The bars on the xylophone are made of wood, and as you can hear when I strike one, it doesn't ring at all. The sound doesn't last very long. So if a long held out note is required, then a roll is used. I'm alternating my sticks to play the same note over and over very quickly. The 
xylophone was made famous and became a standard instrument used in the orchestra because of George Hamilton Green. George Hamilton Green was a virtuoso, and back in the early part of the 20th century, he popularized the xylophone by composing many pieces and ragtimes for xylophone. In 1926, he wrote an instruction course for xylophone, a complete course of 50 lessons, which could be sent away for, and it would be mailed to you, one lesson at a time. In addition to scales and technique exercises, each lesson also contains a ragtime exercise. This is lesson 12, ragtime. This is the vibraphone. It shares pretty much the same range as the xylophone. It doesn't go quite as high. Its range is from F, below middle C, to F, that is two and a half octaves above middle C. Like the bells, its bars are made of metal. And like the bells, the notes ring. It rings so much that there is a dampener under the bars controlled by a foot pedal that dampens or stops the sound. You can also dampen by using another mallet to stop the sound. So instead of you can have You have probably noticed that I'm not just holding one stick or mallet in each hand, but two. This allows me to play more than two notes at a time. Four mallets can be used on any keyboard percussion, but it is more common to see it on the larger keyboard instruments, since the bars are wider. Here is an excerpt from a piece written by Vince Guaraldi, arranged for vibraphone by Stephen Primatic. Christmas time is here. <laughs> range of the mallet instruments. It has the same upper range as the xylophone and bells, but it also extends down more than an octave below middle C. On this instrument, the bars get gradually wider and bigger as the notes go lower in pitch. As large as it is, it is not the largest. There are bass marimbas that are even bigger, and the lowest bars are even wider. Like the xylophone, the bars are made of wood. It uses a softer wood than the xylophone and has a more mellow sound. this video, 
I'm going to play a part of Bach's Sonata No. 2 in B minor for violin on marimba. This part is called a double. Hello, my name is Mary Lee Newby and I play oboe with the Delaware County Symphony. I've played oboe for over 30 years and though it is a difficult instrument to learn, I love its beautiful sound and the way it keeps challenging me to practice and continue to develop as a musician. There's always more to learn with the oboe. The oboe was originally called bois, which means high wood in French. It's a member of the woodwind family which includes flutes and clarinets. In fact, many people think it's a clarinet when I ask, what is this? But there is one way that it is very different from a clarinet, and that is the double reed. A clarinet has a single reed that looks like this. And the single reed of the clarinet fits onto a mouthpiece that goes on top of the clarinet. Whereas the oboe has a double reed that goes into a hole at the top of the oboe. The double reed is made from giant cane. The cane is cut and dried, gouged and shaped until it looks something like this. And now you can see more clearly why it's called a double reed, because once the tip of this reed is cut, then we have two blades that vibrate against each other. And that produces the characteristic and beautiful sound of the oboe. Oboes can be made of wood or plastic. Mine is made of grenadilla, which is a type of wood. The oboe has a very special job. If you have ever been to an orchestra concert, then you probably heard the oboe. The oboe tunes the orchestra. That means before the orchestra plays together, the oboe plays a note, usually an A, and the other instruments tune to that A. Once everyone is in tune, the music can begin. One of the reasons the oboe tunes the orchestra is because the sound of the oboe is pure and penetrating, meaning that even while other instruments are playing, the oboe can still be heard. One of the things I love about the oboe is that you can express a big range of emotions from excitement and joy to melancholy and yearning. Because it is so expressive, many composers have written beautiful solos for the oboe. I would like to play two selections so that you can hear how the oboe sounds. The first is the Slavonic Dance by Antonin Dvorak.
piece I'd like to play for you is the Virginia Reel. enjoyed learning more about the oboe and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to our virtual instrument petting zoo. We hope you found our video informative, engaging, and fun. We invite you to learn more about the Delaware County Symphony on our website dcsmusic.org, on our YouTube channel, Facebook page, Instagram, or Twitter. Please check back later in October for our second chamber concert of the season, a program featuring our strings, then in November, you can hear our brass ensemble perform. Until then, be safe and be well. Thank you.